Perfect. Well, um, hi, everyone. Kira already introduced us, and I'm assuming um, probably we have already met, but I'm Alex. Um, I've been working for SFC for six months, and today I'll be presenting with Justice. Uh, hi. I, for those who haven't met me, I'm Justice, and I've been on board with SFC for the better part of three months. Uh, so today is a little bit of a different food for thought because, as you can tell, uh, sorry about that. Um, we have me and Alex presenting rather than an industry professional, which is what we usually do with Food for Thought. And the reason for this is because of this week's topic of divestment. Um, we figured a lot of divestment movements um, are led by student-run groups on various university campuses. So we figured that this is an issue that, and one that student voices should matter more than ever. So we figured we would present. Yeah, so we're just going to be doing a quick rundown of what divestment is, a couple of arguments for and against um, how SFC has been involved in the topic, and then we're going to open it up for questions and a little bit different, Kara already kind of explained, but we're going to make it more of a discussion. So definitely um, feel free to write questions in the chat, but then also we would love to hear everyone else's opinion on the topic at the end. Just to start off, for those of you who kind of might be wondering what even is divestment, so I guess the short explanation is it's the opposite of investment. However, the term is generally used when referencing the removal of investment in fossil fuels by institutions like universities who have endowment funds. So endowment funds are the donations of money to nonprofit organizations that are used to then invest and grow their wealth. And although the divestment movement um, does span across many industries and different types of institutions. Today, we'll be focusing specifically on the divestment movements across Canadian universities. So divestment movements became, sorry, began to take hold in post-secondary institutions kind of a few years ago. And now there's over 40 student-led uh, divestment advocacy groups on campuses across Canada. And the main goal and the reason that these groups started was to advocate that endowment funds should be invested responsibly in areas that can promote cleaner futures for campuses and for future generations. So I think we can all agree that any change that's gonna promote a more environmentally sustainable future and taking steps is in that direction is definitely the right way to go. However, there are a ton of unintended consequences of fossil fuel divestment in Canada. And so it's crucial to consider that when deciding um, the way to take action. So um, we're just gonna go through a few of the arguments for and against divestment, because I find it pretty interesting. I think you guys will see at the end um, kind of why this discussion is different than most or this debate. So some main arguments for divesting is that it frames the debate as a moral political stance that is aiming to result in climate action. So the idea behind this argument is that by exerting social and political pressures for one's campus to divest their assets connected to these companies that are involved or are the ones extracting fossil fuels, that it will be a step to providing their campus or to proving that their campus is committed to a more sustainable future and that it will convince other universities to follow suit. Um, Another argument there is that it will allow the organizations to align their investments with their values. So I think many of us um, are either graduated or are currently in universities or colleges or whatever secondary um, education. And I think we all can see and we all know that our schools are continuously making these on-campus changes to be more sustainable, you know, introducing recycling measures, water efficiency systems, integrating um, renewable energy and so on. And so the argument here is that schools should align their investments with these changes. Um, so then by creating a negative stigma around Canadian fossil fuels, it's the hope that others will feel socially pressured to stop investing and limit the total amount of funding that these companies have. 
So the idea here is that it can diminish the exploration capacity of fossil fuel companies and limit the likelihood of new pipelines and new um, infrastructure, which can and uh, have impacts on the environment and the people that they pass through. And then another kind of argument, a big one here is that the movement can encourage a green recovery. So it's the, if you're gonna invest, it shouldn't be how it was yesterday. We should aim and build for tomorrow. So the idea is that the movement can push companies to spend more time and effort on reducing emissions and maybe reinvesting in carbon capture and storage and other um, newer technologies. And then kind of lastly here, there is also a lot of talk that um, these investments can be put elsewhere that can be beneficial financially. Um, so I think, you know, the fossil fuel industry is very volatile to external effects. There are industries that definitely can do better financially. However, this doesn't account for the economic side of divestment as the Canadian fossil fuel industry has so many benefits to the Canadian economy. Um, but further, I think with COVID, it does kind of show how quickly demand can change. But I think looking forward as we're getting back into things, you know, people are driving and flying back in the office. Um, the projection for uh, demand for oil and gas is going to continue to rise. And this means that I think we will need more investment, billions of dollars of investments to support the transition that will take a couple of or many years to a lower carbon future. So that kind of brings us into some arguments against divestment. So um, while we still demand fossil fuels, we should choose Canada. I think that's kind of the number one argument that the majority of the world's energy needs are met by oil and gas. We should be supporting the Canadian oil and gas industry um, because we're the leader in environmental, social and government governance, investor criteria and standards. And then, you know, I think there's when I was talking about the unintended side effects, um, it doesn't necessarily reduce the CO2 emissions. And the idea behind this is that it is more of a symbolic movement. And so if universities divest, um, other companies, private or otherwise, will invest, which may not actually affect total investments. And I mean, on the other side, less investment to the industry as a whole can even limit the abilities of these Canadian companies to continue exploring safer and cleaner technologies. Um, so another big argument for is, or sorry, against divestment is that it can actually push emissions outside of Canada. So again, you know, Canada is a leader in the, um, you know, social governments, environmental standards. So it can hurt the finances of these environmentally responsible producers and push the emissions outside of Canada where there are lower constraints, constraints and standards. So, you know, for example, it could prevent LNG facilities in Canada, which have the lowest GHG emissions from replacing coal power generations in other parts of the world. It can also divert a tension away from realistic and short-term opportunities that can make a huge dent in these emissions and contribute to the fight against climate change. So that kind of brings us down to just a few more unintended consequences. And I think this is a point where a lot of people don't necessarily think about the consequences that um, will have on most Canadians, whether they are involved directly in the industry or not. So, I mean, it can mean fewer jobs for Canadians across the country, it can mean fewer government revenues that can be um, used to pay for things, yes, like clean technology and newer technologies, but also hospitals, schools, public infrastructure, um, et cetera, that also do definitely affect those who are not related to the industry. Um, it can mean fewer opportunity for rural workers. And again, oil and gas revenues diverted from Canadian companies to other countries with inferior rankings. And then kind of lastly here is that there's a lot of talk about, so if we're gonna divest, what is going to take the place? Um, you know, there needs to be a plan B. And I think that's when it comes down to that there's a lack of consideration for the systematic nature of emissions. Um, I don't think individuals are at the point where they're willing to sacrifice the everyday tools that we use, you know, again, driving, flying, heating our homes um, that do rely on fossil fuels and the transition away from them doesn't happen overnight. It's gonna take many years. 
So that's that last big argument against it. And then kind of just um, moving on here, I this quote is kind of um, recapping what I was saying, but you know, Canadian oil and gas industry is a leader in environmental spending in the country and companies are really doubling down to reduce their impact on emissions and uh, deploying new technology, you know, carbon capture, there's plenty of others, but I think that's kind of the biggest thing um, against divestment. But pretty much why we did that little two side things is kind of to show that I think both sides do have the same exact goal of reducing emissions and creating a cleaner future. And that's why this topic for me is a different debate because both sides are, I mean, it shouldn't be a two-sided thing because I think the main goal is very similar. And it's just the way that for and against divestment, you can really look at it. So I find this, that's why I find divestment so interesting and such a great topic to do research on. Um, so speaking of that, here's a quick video that uh, SFC has done, kind of just uh, two people talking about divestment as current students. Instead of divestment to kind of push that argument for looking after our climate, whether that's investing in renewables or just encouraging more practice, whether that's changing your lifestyle as well. I think there's just a lot more productive avenues that we could go down. It's a polarizing topic. You're either on one side or the other. It's like a, a big movement divestment that you almost mm -hmm. don't get the chance to see all sides. I find two people think that we can jump from absolutely having it all to like green end. I think people need to realize how much we consume and how much this energy and these products are kind of a necessity in our lives. It's part of like conversation that maybe gets missed is we don't talk enough about where we're getting it right now and the difference maybe between getting it from a Canadian source or an external kind of foreign source. It's also important because it's not just an environmental argument, it's an argument for economics, it's an argument for social factors and all those things. You have to think about what you're divesting from. You're divesting from like one of Canada's biggest economic drivers. Now in Calgary, noticing how it impacts jobs and everything like that, definitely something to look at when people talk about divestment. Is the divestment movement at your school really big? Yeah, it's actually really big, I'd say in the last like year. Second year, they had a major protest that was like surrounding climate change, but it also had divestment on it. So as a student, I was kind of conflicted because it was tied to the like global march for climate change which I, I could back and I would get behind, but then they also tied in the divestment argument. So I kind of had conflicting opinions with it. But like, you know, you, you have this like argument for divestment, but then you're driving your car, your home is heated. Like it's, I know people like say this all the time as an example, but it's so important to realize like how much we rely on it. Like, unless you can be self-sustaining without it, um, you can't just shut it off. I wish that like this kind of movement go could go towards finding like different alternatives or just improving what we have now instead of shaming the industry and trying to push people against it when it could be a large driver for actual change. People that I've talked to on like these interviews are from out east and by the end both of us have been able to be like I see your side and you see mine and we're kind of able to come to the middle ground. Hi, everybody. So me again, um, just speaking a bit on that divestment uh, D2 video. Um, basically, the goal of it is to create more of a talk around energy um, and to involve students in a large, more important conversation between each other. Um, you know, we discuss um, in a balanced environment so that the conversations can be used more as an educational tool, um, no matter what your stance or beliefs are. So for example, in that video, um, she was talking, yes, she has a stance in support of fighting climate change, but also a stance against divestment. And that's okay. And that's, that's a normal stance to have. So to bring this more polarizing topic to more of a middle ground where students um, and, you know, everyone within SFC can share their ideas 
um, discuss different solutions in a positive manner around divestment, I think is, is the main goal. Just talking about a bit of my experience in the short time that I've had um, within SFC. Um, recently, I did um, an interview with the Canadian Energy Center, um, just talking about divestment, um, talking about a student, or I guess, former student now, um, something that, you know, I had never done before. And honestly, I was a little afraid at how people would take notice and how uh, my peers would react. But um, the, the response was overwhelmingly um, positive to just starting to talking about it. And, you know, I gained a lot of connections uh, to a larger network of people, um, not just, you know, my own friends, but also, um, you know, those professionals who work within the industry, um, just from putting myself out there and stating, you know, what I believe. Um, a lot of people, um, especially older people, are surprised by a young person taking a stance like that on a really polarizing topic. So, um, or even just doing research on it. So it really does set you apart by having those kinds of uh, conversations. Um, you know, sometimes the exposure to a different viewpoint is all that people need uh, to make up their minds about something. So, um, you know, I can't speak for everyone. Um, there's a lot of valid reasons for divestment, um, as Alex was stating. But, you know, what I can tell you is that there's a lot of other ways to have more of an influence on, you know, the development of clean tech and ESG, especially in Canada. And most of that isn't from divestment. Most of that is through working with those companies, divestment says that we should be getting away from. One of the questions we should be asking when we're thinking about divesting is, you know, do we use fossil fuels because these companies supply them? Or do, we, do they supply fossil fuels because we demand them? And that was something that was touched on um, a lot in, in the last few slides. Um, you know, being in university, there's a lot of focus especially on climate change and on, you know, we just need to make a lot of noise in the media, get people to move away from oil and gas as quick as possible, stigmatize it and, you know, make it seem like it's not a viable way forward or right now. Um, and that's all that needs to be done. And it's really not all that needs to be done. You know, I did a few questions with uh, Soheb, uh, who's a student at Mount Royal University, who's part of the, uh, uh, the petroleum club there and you know runs that and you know he brought up a really important point to me which is it's really important to take heed that we're not creating other problems as a byproduct of trying to solve our current problems and you know you can see that right now um, in the current state of the world with um, he was talking about you know with the current high gas prices um, when we divest away from oil and gas like we have the last five to ten years not just universities but with a lack of infrastructure, um, we get the result of needing more capacity, but the capacity just isn't there. Pipelines aren't there. And that's the result of, of stopping that development and just hindering it to the point where we need it the most and it, it hasn't been allowed to flourish and businesses haven't been allowed to flourish. So, you know, that creates a lot of problems for um, the economic health of our country. Um, and so Habe also said that you know, if you really think about it, it's the most marginalized people within our country that suffer the most from it. So when we stigmatize our own industry, it doesn't really have an effect on the environment, but it has a huge effect on just destroying our economy and destroying the well-being of, of its citizens, really. So, you know, just like this quote to the right says, we still rely heavily on natural resources to live our lives. And when you take the example of Queen's University, who decided, in fact, not to divest, um, they offered solutions and those solutions um, weren't to get rid or not work with fossil fuel companies. Their solutions were to create more education, um, to have more research around, um, you know, clean tech and things like that and institutional changes. So changes in how, you know, their campus reduces emissions. And when they were asked about why they need to remain stakeholders and shareholders in these companies, um, their response was, these are the corporate leaders, uh, in quote, the university would most want to engage in finding solutions and not pushing them away. Um, and that relates back to another thing that uh, I was talking with Sohaib, and he said, you know, we shouldn't be trying to offshore our problems to other countries, but instead we should be trying to solve them in a more meaningful and responsible way within Canada. And so to that point, why should we walk away from an industry that 
provide so much for our country for so many years. Um, there are impacts and changes like climate change, but we as young people, we can't just turn off um, a switch and tell them to take their plant and go build it elsewhere. There's no, there's not really another option other than to work with industry uh, and to work with um, oil and gas companies to reduce emissions. As far as you in this call getting involved, you're the educated ones. You're the ones who have all the knowledge. And I think that there's a disconnect about what the unspoken consequences of divestment are, especially with young people in university and those who support divestment. Um, they support it mostly because it sounds good in theory to get away from oil and gas as soon as possible um, and get on to low carbon tech. And, you know, obviously at SFC, we support low carbon technologies in any way we can. But when you shift away from those responsible oil and gas companies, um, like the ones in Canada, you shift away from their work in reducing their carbon footprint. You shift away from an industry that's actively trying to help and actively trying to cooperate with environmental challenges. In effect, a, a majority actually of Canada's institutional investors uh, agree with this point. And, you know, there's an RBC um, research report done on ESG factors in Canada. And they found that actually 5% of institutional investors or only 5% um, believe that divestment is an effective tool to address um, ESG issues. And in fact, 54% believed that we should instead be engaging with those companies and investing more and becoming greater stakeholders um, at the table with them. Um, the others in the group are undecided between the two. And that just shows to me that in general, there's just a large group of people who don't have that information to make an informed decision on what to do. Um, and that's one of the largest challenges facing us today. It's not just the students in universities that don't have a, don't, you know, understand um, that there's other options, but people in general and people within Canada. So going on to the next slide, um, just for reference, um, you know, what actions have Canadian universities taken um, as far as divesting? Divesting or not, you know, how has this affected them? Um, and I'll just show a bit of a uh, chart here that shows, you know, the amount invested uh, through their endowment funds, whereas the total endowment. So just for reference, this is a slightly outdated. Um, I believe that University of British Columbia has actually reduced the amount uh, invested in fossil fuels by uh, a large amount, but it does show the approximate stance and dollar amounts that top Canadian universities have invested in fossil fuels. And the biggest thing here is to show that, you know, even though those universities have committed to divesting, they haven't taken all their investment out of the industry. Um, and rather they reviewed their portfolios uh, and divested from companies that don't hold up to ESG standards and those who are not working to create new technology within the industry. And most of those companies that they've divested away from are those um, outside of Canada because the ones within Canada are the ones doing the most with regards to ESG um, and creating clean tech. So, um, you know, it's an important misconception uh, that divesting is, you know, completely getting away from all um, investment in fossil fuels. Um, it's, it can mean, you know, it's a factor that can stigmatize um, many Canadian producers when they see that, oh, you know, universities are getting far away from oil and gas companies, and it just kind of stigmatizes them in the media. Um, you know, where in reality, they're leading in ESG standards and creating those technologies to work towards lower emissions. So um, moving on to the next slide, just talking a bit more about the universities themselves. Um, so one of the things I researched was um, the, the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings. So those are the rankings of universities in the world um, that are advancing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So those goals are a mix between economic, social, and environmental. Um, and you can see that um, Queen's University um, ranks actually fifth in the world when it comes to uh, these rankings. Uh, UBC is ranked 13th, and I believe that McMaster University is ranked 14th, so just behind you at UBC. Um, so Queens and McMaster are two universities that have um, chosen to stay away from divestment, whereas UBC uh, has a goal to divest completely. Um, but divest or not, um, the main point is that all of these universities either use Canadian fossil fuels to power their campuses or 
they use Canadian resources to build and maintain them. And all of them in turn are ranked among the best universities in the world for advancing society in a positive direction for different reasons. Um, so you can see that Queens is ranked um, higher when it comes to, to um, economic and social goals, um, as well as being very high in, in environmental uh, goals, whereas UBC has more of a focus on the environmental aspect. So, um, you know, that's why I think divestment is not just an environmental discussion, it's also an economic and social discussion. And if we divest away, we remove that link and that relationship with those companies that are doing work to reduce their environmental impact. Mm -hmm.